I've talked a lot about the bits and pieces of sizing and selecting actuators, so I figure maybe I would just go through a basic example to show what the whole process is like. I'm Corey Foster at Valen Corporation. Let's see what we can learn. First off, we want to narrow down the options, and I discussed that in episode 15, whether it's the low, you know, the belt pulley, the medium, the ball screw, maybe the high, the linear motor. And then we really want to take a start with the holistic approach, episode 17. We have a want to have an idea of the controller and everything else that might be involved. And then we need the basic requirements as we defined in the lost ped requirements in episode 19. So let's start with a real basic example. We're given a move profile of 100, uh, 400 millimeters moving in half a second with a 30 kilogram load. So the typical initial assumption is that that is going to be a velocity of 400 millimeters in half a second, which is 800 millimeters per second, right? Hmm. Well, if you refer back to episode five, there's a motion profile. And over here on the left-hand side, we have distance under the curve, we have velocity versus time. But if you have an acceleration rate, you have to go to a higher speed. If you have an even lower acceleration rate, you have to go to the a higher speed. Well, in this case, if we assumed that 400 millimeters and a half a second of 800 millimeters per second, that is an instantaneous acceleration. And we can't do that. So we know it's going to be some higher speed than 800 millimeters per second. Maybe it's going to be 1200 here or 1600 millimeters per second here. Well, Let's take a look at starting with just kind of a ballpark solution. Here are some actuators that kind of get us into an area uh, of, of the realm of what might be a good solution. But you see the highest maximum speed is only 1400 millimeters per second here. We have ones that go down to 250. Um, then we have the payloads that bounce above and below that 30 kilograms for the horizontal load. But also note that there's a footnote to this, that the maximum, maximum acceleration rate is going to be 1G for the horizontal loads, which is what we're looking at here. 1G is about 9,800 millimeters per second squared, or 9.81 uh, meters per second squared. All right, so we could go through and calculate a move profile that then really gives us a good, um, a good force or a good torque uh, output. And this tends to be kind of an iterative process, figuring out, well, which acceleration rate shall I use? What gives me what speed? And what does that do to the, the acceleration rate and therefore the torque on the output? We can go through that math. But really, I prefer to use a calculator that's going to do the heavy lifting for me. So if we put in a move profile, 400 millimeters in half a second, I'm going to start by picking a trapezoidal move profile here. And you can see this trapezoidal move profile and then it decelerates. That gives a maximum speed of 1200 millimeters per second. So here's the maximum acceleration rate, which is under that 9800 millimeters per second. So it's under 1G. And that acceleration times the mass here equals the force here. That's how that all works together. Uh, I can also take a look at this one here where I looked at the triangular one. And now here's the triangular move profile. And that gives me 1600 millimeters per second, uh, which is now 6.4 meters per second squared for the acceleration. All right. So if we take a look here, I find that I don't have one that goes up to 1600 millimeters per second, but I do have one that goes to 1200 millimeters per second as the max speed. And it handles that 37 uh, kilograms, which is more than 30 that I have. So this actuator right here looks like it is a good choice. Then if we don't have a motor on the actuator, we need to know what the torque output is. Okay, remember torque is basically the inertia times the acceleration, the angular acceleration. Now the angular, uh, the inertia here is going to be made up of the load, the lead screw, and the motor, which I can calculate all that. It's usually given by the products I've, I'm looking at. Uh, and then the acceleration is the omega over T, which is that peak speed, 1200 millimeters per second over the time. And that's gonna give me the torque output and that's gonna give me a motor. In this case, the motor was actually on the actuator already, so I don't have to pick that. But I hope that helps.
from Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. If you have any questions and want to reach out to us, reach out to us at themotioncontrolshow.com or this email address here. We're happy to help.